Pastor, it is a great joy to be here with you and uh, again to be back with you. And of course, as you already know, Pastor Mike and Lisa are very special to us and Pastor Roger and Amy, to have them with us in Romania last year was, uh, was exceptional and uh, always a joy. By the way, when uh, Pastor Brzean started, he said, he is risen. Now, the proper response from the congregation in Romania is he has risen indeed. Okay? You get that? He has risen indeed. So how about let's try that again. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, that was, uh, well. Let's try it again, okay? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Ah, that was great. I like that much better. But it's exciting to see what God is doing. And, of course, in Romania, when we have the privilege of preaching the word, to see people respond, uh, that is always a great joy. And it's a special joy to be here back in Parkersburg at Grace Gospel. And thank you again for your effort to, to highlight Eastern Europe and to bring Pastor Gigi and Pastor uh, Marius here uh, to be able to share with you. And, again, I believe that every night this week. You're going to be blessed as we open the Word of God, as you hear from different ones, from Brother Fred tonight, uh, who is representing the Jewish mission. And Fred is an outstanding teacher. He's going to do the Passover presentation tonight. That's going to be a blessing, and we encourage you to be here and be a part of that as well. By the way, he has taught that to pastors in Romania on two different occasions, and they love it. I'm telling you, they're excited. First time they'd heard many of those, of the way in which he presents it. They'd heard, of course, they know and understand the Passover, but, but to see the way Fred presents it is, uh, is very special. Well, these two men are men that I love and appreciate and have known now for many years, but especially in the last nine or ten years, we work very closely together. So it's a great joy to have them with us. Today we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 5. When Mario said Romans chapter 15, I thought, wow, we're on the same page for sure. Romans chapter 5. Now as we look at this chapter, let me just give you a little bit of background. The first four chapters of Romans, the Apostle Paul and the leadership of the Holy Spirit brings us the place of understanding that all the world has sinned. There is no doubt that you and I are sinners and that we are condemned in our sin. In other words, because we, have, because we have sinned, we are condemned. And the way he puts it, he says that no one can be saved by religious deeds, such as keeping the law, or by works, or by human effort. So he proves to us in the first four chapters that by grace are you saved through faith. And interestingly enough, he even uses Abraham as his illustration. But when he gets to chapter 5, he lays before us in chapter 5 God's unbelievable love and the results of our justification. In other words, when we do come to Christ, when we do accept Christ as our personal Savior, we are justified. We stand before God just as if we never sinned because Jesus Christ himself died and was the propitiation for our sin. He's the one who paid the price for our sin. The first 11 verses talk about the results of justification. The last verses from 12 and following talk about the basis of our justification. We'll not have time to deal with both of those, so I want to concentrate on the results of our justification. In other words, when you and I come to Christ, is heaven just wishful thinking? Is it it a pie in the sky? Is it something that we hope for, but there is nothing really there? Well, Paul tells us under the leadership of the Spirit, it is absolute truth that we can bank on it, that we can trust God, we can trust His Word, and that we know, in fact, that it isn't bragging because it's fact. It is reality. And so he deals with this, the basis of our justification, and then the blessings, and tells us that we can trust God. There are two things he brings out. First of all, he shares with us how wonderful it is to be a Christian. Uh, Just the joy uh, of having our sins released or or forgiven and the burden lifted. And then he also shares with us the purpose, that 
that it is a lasting thing. It's not something that's going to pass by. It is something that is lasting. And he lists seven different blessings that come to us because of Christ. Now, I'm going to have to turn around and see my outline here. You notice that, well, let me move up here just for a moment. Would it bother you if I do this? Can I pull this over here? Is that all right? Do I have your permission? Good, thanks. All right, notice that Mike Allen is now the director of Frontline Fellowship. Uh, Don Kyer is the man who founded this work. Uh, Don is, was a dear friend of mine, and we had the privilege in 1973 of going to Eastern Europe. Our first mission as Frontline Fellowship was to smuggle Bibles and song books and children's literature and other materials into Eastern Europe. And we went into all the different countries, and God protected us. We don't have time to tell those stories, but we saw the miraculous hand of God as he blinded the minds and and hearts of or eyes of, of some of the guards and some of the soldiers as we went from border to border, and how he protected some of our couriers when we turned the Bibles over to them. It was just an amazing thing to see God working. And so we worked with Don. I was a pastor and went with him several times on these trips. And then in 1989, we started the Bible College there in Romania. And, uh, and after Don died in 2005, I became the director. And just uh, this past few months ago, Brother Mike was elected the director, and I'm now his assistant. So if you see me following him around, you know, trying to, trying to do his bidding... You'll know why, right? I want to stay in good graces with the director. I want to talk about God's unbelievable love and talk about, first of all, we have peace with God. Now look at those verses. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Now I'm sure that you recognize this and know this because you're pastors or faithful teachers of the word. But before we came to Christ, we were enemies of God. You know, we don't like to think about that. Say, wait a minute, I've never been an enemy of God. But the Word of God says in Romans 5.10, if when we were enemies we were reconciled by God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled we shall live by His life. Therefore, in other words, the Scripture is saying that truly because of our sin that made us enemies with God. But we're justified by faith through Christ. Now, because we have peace with God, our desire was to teach others that they might teach others. Uh, You might have noticed the theme verse of our mission of Frontline Fellowship is 2 Timothy 2.2. The things that you have learned of me, Paul says, you teach to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Now, when we were going behind the Iron Curtain before... Uh, We were able to start the Bible college. We used to do training sessions, seminars, two and three and four days at a time in different cities in in Eastern Europe, in different countries in Eastern Europe. If I might just pause for a moment and share one, one thing. I learned one thing that I never really understood about the Holy Spirit of God. I have always preached it. I've always taught it. I've always read the Word of God. And prayed that, and know that, of course, the moment you accept Christ as your Savior, you're filled with the Spirit. But I never experienced the same thing that I experienced once I started going into Eastern Europe. Uh, we would go to these cities, and I'll use Timisoara because it could be in any city, but we'd go to a city like Timisoara, and we'd meet our, we'd meet our courier and say to the courier, we're going to be able to stay here two days, or maybe we're going to be able to stay three days. And and you can gather as many people, pastors, Christian leaders, those who would like for us to teach the Word of God or just share with them for a few days. You you tell them that we're here and and that we'll stay for two or three days and teach the Word. And time and time again, and even in different countries, men will say to us, oh, they're already here. What do we mean they're already here? There's no way they could know that we We didn't even know we were going to be able to get in the country. How do they know? They said they're already here. Some have ridden their bikes for two or three days, or they have ridden their buses, or they have walked for days. But they're already here. 
waiting for you to teach the word. Now, I had never experienced anything like that in my life. It just even now it sends cold chills up my back just to think about that. And and then as even now it brings tears to your eyes to see the workings of the Holy Spirit of God and how God works. And you know, Pastor gave the invitation this morning. And you know the fascinating thing is that if you're here today without Christ, the Holy Spirit of God is already working in your heart because He loves you, He cares for you, He is drawing you to the person of Christ, and He wants you to be a part of the family of God. And if you're here and belong to Christ, which I know the majority of the people here are, then God wants to do something special with your life. The Holy Spirit wants you to allow Him the freedom to operate in and through your life. Well, as we saw God working and we saw the need for training, when the wall did, when the wall fell and Ceausescu was, uh, was killed, the people of Romania in particular, we've had other countries, Serbia asked us to start a Bible school there, uh, and uh, uh, Hungary they asked us to start a Bible school there, but we were drawn to the pastors and to the people of Romania And that's where God chose to start TBBI, the Timisoara Baptist Bible Institute. And this is where your pastor has had the privilege of teaching, along with Brother Mike. This is one of our classes in the classroom. This is a house that we bought, knocked out the walls, and and made uh, uh, made made a long classroom. It's exciting to see what God is doing there. Here's another group. Mike, do you recognize the guy back in the back? Has this got a... Yeah, I have to see that guy. His hair's a little bit shorter today. Uh, and then right here, see him? You'd think he's one of the Romanian students, but he's not. He's one of our he's one of our teachers. Now uh, this is when Pastor Roger and uh, Mike were there uh, teaching, and uh, we had a good good group of students there, opportunity to teach the word. But because we have received the peace of God, we have expressed that, and we wanted to teach others as well. But notice also that verse of Scripture tells us in the first verse that we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And in verse 2, by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Now, what does that mean, we have access? In other words, the Word of God is reminding us that prior to the cross, the Jewish people had access to God only through the priest. By the same token, any Gentile who had become a follower or believer in Christ only had access to the priest. The the Jewish people were not allowed to go into the presence of God. There was a a veil, a huge veil that that covered the, the Holy of Holies and only the high priest could go in once a year. But when Christ died on the cross, the scripture says that in Luke chapter 23, verse 45, that the veil was torn in two from the top to the bottom. Remember that? Direct access to God. But for the Gentile, the Gentile, it wasn't the veil that separated us. It was a wall. In the, in the tabernacle, in the, in the temple, there was a, a wall for the Gentiles. The Gentile could not go beyond that wall. As a matter of fact, uh, there was the writings on that wall that that even threatened the life of anyone who went beyond that wall. But don't we thank God for what the Word says in the book of Ephesians? It says, the wall was broken down. How about that? So that means the wall for the Gentile, the veil for the Jew broken down. We have direct access to God. You and I can bow where we are. We can turn our heart toward God and pray to Him. Any time, day or night, he is always there, ready to listen, ready to answer your prayer, ready to meet your need. What an exciting thing that is to recognize the beauty of the fact that we can come to him. So here we were condemned, condemned as sinners. Now we've been justified, we've been righteous, we've made peace with God, and now we have access to God by faith. Notice that access is by faith. It is for those who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And so that's what the Word of God is reminding us of. 
Also, the scripture says we're to rejoice in hope. And I love the, I love the word hope. And this hope is not talking about, sometimes we in our English, we use the word, well, I hope it's true. No, that's not it at all. This is a, a stated fact. We have hope. We can put our faith and trust in the person of God. We have access. And scripture even reminds us here that we have peace of God that covers the past. We have the we have the, um, the the access to God that covers the presence, and we have the hope that we will one day be with Christ in, in heaven, and the and that is the future. So all three, past, present, and future, are covered here in these wonderful verses of Scripture. But there's a young man that I want you to see because you support him. This is Gabriel Sismaru. Now you've been supporting his pastor, his father, for a long time. Uh, who graduated from our school, and you remember that, right? Uh, and so Constantine has two of his sons have come to TBBI and have, have graduated. This is one of them. The other works with him on a part-time basis. Gabriel is working at full-time as a missionary. He has started two churches uh, there in Romania. This is his wife, Maria. He met her. She was a missionary working in some of the villages there, he met her, and they got married, and I had the joyful privilege of being there for their wedding. And um, back here, I put this in here because he's, he's in here somewhere. I've forgotten. See him? Somebody help me. I think that's him back there. No, there he is, right here. That is when he was in school. Notice how skinny he is now. He's gained a little weight now. <laughs> and this is Andre Turku. You remember him? You also support him. So this is when they were... They were in school. Now, Gabriel is, uh, he didn't start a church like the traditional method. The traditional method, even in Romania, is you go door to door. As a matter of fact, when I get to Luchin in just a few moments, uh, Pastor Gigi took Luchin on mission. They go on visitation on Saturday. Uh, but their form of visitation is it's a little bit different. They do go door to door, but uh, Lucian would take his guitar. They go in the houses. They sing. They minister to them, and they literally minister throughout that day, uh, meeting in different homes. And then ultimately, the goal is to start a Bible study in the home, and and then start inviting people in, right? And that's the traditional way. But Lucian, uh, but Lucian, but Gabriel started with a vacation Bible school, so he started inviting kids. And I want you to just notice this first vacation Bible school. Now, church was planted as a result of this work right here. There he is preaching. You see what that is behind him? Recognize that? Uh, you kids, I know you don't recognize it. But we all do, all of us older folks. All right, now look at the kids. You notice that there are a lot of adults that come to VBS as well. See that? Here he is preaching, and you know, I have pictures of him singing, playing guitar, and singing as well. Well, what a what a blessing! And this is his wife during the uh, it's during the summertime, and this is and now look at there, two, right? Married. He's still skinny. I thought he'd gain a little weight, but no. Anyway, uh, I'll tell you, they're just a wonderful couple. The thing that I love about about our graduates and, and, and men like Gabrielle is that they are willing to sacrifice for the Lord. They're willing to do whatever it takes to build the work, to live in the villages, to work in the villages, to minister in the villages, and it's a great joy. And he is now able to bring that same hope to others because of your support, because you're helping keep them there. And let me just explain that for a moment. Now, Gabrielle has started two churches. But in most, in the village churches, those churches are not able to support a, a pastor on a full-time basis. So most of our men start three churches because they're very small. But even with three, they're not able to support them full-time. And so what we try to do is introduce these men to you, just as these have been introduced to your church, and then you help support that person, and that keeps him full-time. We never want to fully support any of our pastors. We want the churches 
to feel the responsibility of tithing and giving, but we just want to help. We want to just encourage. And so we try to do that, and we monitor that uh, very carefully as well. But there you see Gabriel and Mary, and I know that you're blessed by, by ministering to them. But here's another blessing. Says, scripture says that we should show Christian character. Now, this one's an interesting one to me. It says, verse 3, Not only so, but we glory in tribulation, and knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. For scarcely, the scripture said, and hope maketh not ashamed, for the love of God which brought, um, yeah, anyway. Uh, but verse 7 says, For scarcely a righteous man would die, but preadventure for good man would some even dare to die. They're here speaking of the love of Christ and then the, the ministry of, of, the ministry of, of uh, Christian character. But not only so, we glory in tribulation. Now, you know, you and I can understand, uh, you and I can understand glorying in hope. I, I don't have any trouble with that. I don't have any trouble with glorying in hope, but glory in tribulation. Now, how do you do that? In other words, when the pressure comes, when, when the trials come, when the problems come, how do we glory in that? Well, it's hard for us to do it. I, I don't like tribulation. I don't like it at all. I don't like trouble. I don't like problems. But what the Word of God is reminding us, because we have Christ that we can turn to, and because He is going to be with us through that tribulation, we can... We can glory in that. We just thank God for his presence. Thank God that he is with us. Thank God that he is helping us and carrying us through as we, as we glory in him. And then the scripture says we experience God's love from within. Now, I, this is a brief story of, uh, of one of the youth camps. You young people, you going to camp this summer? Right? How many of you? Can I see your... Oh, ah, yeah, I got a few. You know what, this, uh, you'll notice this is Brother Fred here, and this is Pastor Gigi. These are fellows from Hope Baptist and uh, Reshita. This is a youth camp on the top of the mountain, of, uh, of Carpathian Mountains, and this is a building. They haven't finished the building yet. They, they still camp out in tents, and uh, that's where one of our young ladies is going to be working. But see this wonderful building, and some of us have... Uh, I've sent some funds over to try to help. But you know what this is? This is the shower. That, that tree has been cut out on the other side, and it's hollow on the inside. And they put water up here and stand under it, and that's your shower. Would you young people like to do that? <laughs> uh, if we showed you that, would you still go to camp? Well, all right. Let's look. We've been saved from future wrath. Look at that verse. Notice in verse 9. Verse 9 teaches us, But much more, being now justified by his blood, we are saved from the wrath through him. I believe that is teaching us that we're saved, uh, we'll be saved by the rapture from the great wrath of the tribulation that is to come. There's much more to that, but I think that is the greatest um, point there, plus the fact that we've been saved by his life. And the next one, we are reconciled to God. This is one of the most beautiful parts of Scripture because you and I uh, were enemies with God, as we saw from Romans 5.10. We, re- we have been reconciled to God by the death of Christ because of what he has done. These are just some of the blessings. There are many other blessings, but here are some of the greatest blessings because God has has opened the door for us who were his enemies now to have make peace with him and to be able to come to him, uh, not only for salvation, but to have that peace and to have to be reconciled to God. And this is our building, TVBI building. This is the house where the school is now. And we're building, um, adding to that building, a first and second floor to it. This was the construction as we were building that addition. This is the, where we were just a few weeks ago, and today they're putting insulation on the outside, and ultimately this back 
wall would be a big glass wall. So you can see the project that we got going there. Go back to there. But you know, you, you really don't, it seems like, no matter what you do for the Lord, that Satan is always there uh, to try to hinder, uh, to try to hold up or, or bring some sort of, of trial into your life. And perhaps it's a test of faith. It could be anything, whatever the Lord may be doing. But you know, the same thing is true. If you surrender your life to Christ, if you make a decision that you're going to walk with God, that you're going to study your Bible, you're going to have devotions daily, you're going to, you're going to minister, you're going to go on visitation, on soul winning visitation, if you're going to serve God in some capacity, or whatever surrender you make, Satan will always oppose you. He'll bring something across your path to try to stop you from fulfilling that commitment to Christ. Now, we have a neighbor who is determined to stop us from building that building. Uh, and she just has a bitter spirit. We've been praying for her salvation. Her name is Olympia. But would you add Olympia to your prayer list and just ask God to do a work in her heart? She's actually sued us, and we're, we'll be going to court in just a few weeks. Uh, we've had to hire an attorney, an attorney from Pastor Maris's church, uh, to, to help us there. But... But there's always opposition, and this, unfortunately, this lady has opposed everything that we're doing. And, and again, it's, it's a bitter spirit. It's because she doesn't know Christ. If the Lord, the Holy Spirit of God could do work in the heart, everything would change, and we'd see a difference there. But being reconciled to God is so important. Let me just share with you one thought. The benefit of receiving our justification is the joy that comes from the humble recognition that we were completely undeserving. God reconciled us to himself through his son. This is what one of my favorite authors said. We were completely undeserving, but he reconciled us to his son. So the, the idea that you and I need to think about is we recognize we did not deserve, we did not deserve that... Um, that reconciliation, being brought back to God, being brought back in favor with God, uh, being brought to the place where we have peace with God, but being able to share uh, the joy of accepting Christ, of living for Christ, of working for Christ. So I ask you, what, what has been your focus lately? What are the things that God put on your heart? Uh, is there some time in your past, maybe even in the past few weeks, maybe even here at this Easter time, that you made a special commitment and surrender to the Lord. Uh, if that's the case, and then whatever opposition may be coming your way, whatever thing the Lord or the Satan is trying to do to block you from making that decision, I encourage you to surrender that to him. Turn our focus to the Lord completely. The only one who not only can forgive us, but the only one who can strengthen us, the only one who can give us what we need to be able to operate day by day, to carry on the work day by day, and to minister day by day. Now, you heard just a little bit of Pastor Gigi's testimony uh, this morning. And I, I was, bar, uh, Judy and I were so uh, grateful the last time we were in Romania, we had the opportunity to go to one of the, his churches in Seduca Mare. You'll see that, that name it was an unusual name for us, aren't they? <laughs> well, we have some unusual ones here, too. But anyway, we went to that church in Sudukamari. When we got there, uh, a very nice dress lady came up to us, and she had written a note in English so she could read it to us. She really spoke pretty good English, but she was afraid she wouldn't get it exactly right. But she wrote a note, and she said, I want to thank you for the Bible training that you gave our pastor because he is such a good Bible teacher. So he was, she was thanking TBBI and churches like yours that support TBBI and, and for graduates like Gigi who know the Word, who have continued to study the Word and who teach the Word and who preach the Word there. She also told us something else uh, that I, I'd really like for Judy to come and share that. Judy, we've got five minutes. Would you come up to that right quick? You got to hurry, though. You got to move fast. 
I want you to, I want you to share. Move faster. That's good. All right. But, but we also learned, we heard a story. We heard a story about a church family. Now, not only about a couple, but a church family. A couple there had invited Judy and I to lunch and Pastor Gigi after church. And then they told us this story while we were eating. Now, we began to cry. You're crying while you're eating. Yes. But we began to cry. And they told us the story. But I want her to tell you. She can do it better than I can. So, Judy, <laughs> tell them that story. By the way, this is my beautiful wife, Judy. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it was such a privilege to be in their home. And um, the Romanian people, they just go all out. I mean, they just put on a spread on their tables that just is so beautiful in presentation and delicious. And uh, we were just so blessed to be in their home. And so um, the man is standing up while we are sitting down eating. And he's weeping. And we're just wondering, what is it? What's going on? And so Gigi had to translate for us. And they began by saying that their daughter had been in a very bad accident. And they were concerned about her life. She was really hanging on by a thread, as our understanding, that she could die. And so they left their home and uh, went to visit her in the hospital in a nearby town. But he began to tell us a story as well. They were in an Orthodox church, and the Orthodox church does not teach the Bible. And so they were very unhappy in this Orthodox church, and they just felt like there was something more that they were missing. So for seven years, they had gotten a Bible and began to read their Bible. And every day they were searching the scriptures and um, trying to find out what it was that was missing in their lives. So while they were gone, they had left their Bible in the middle of their dining room table, their small table, and they had a picture of their daughter on top of the Bible. While they were gone, their house burned. And it was just completely destroyed. And so the men from the church of this village realized what had happened after they got the fire put out and everything. They went into the house to see what the damage was. Everything was blackened except the Bible in the middle of the table with their daughter's picture. And so these men in the church, in the church village, they completely redid this house for this couple. They, it was beautiful. We would never have dreamed the house had burned because it was just beautifully done. And so he's standing there weeping as he's telling us this his story. His coming in and out. His yeah, wife, right. and she was adding to the story <laughs> as she was coming in. And um, we didn't know, but Bill was there last June, and he had spoken in the church and given the gospel story. That was their first Sunday in the church and the reason they went to church was because of what that church did for them and ministering to them during this difficult time that next sunday they accepted christ as their personal savior and they wanted us to know that and they were baptized and so it was such a joy for us and a privilege for us to hear their testimony and to be in their home and we just saw the work of the Lord in this village church and what Amen. God is doing. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. But see, didn't you do a better job than I could? There's no way I could match that. But you see the, you see the body of Christ at work. See, that was the Holy Spirit in the life of the believers touching their neighbors that may or may not have responded to the gospel. But they were already seeking. See, the Holy Spirit already working in their heart. For seven years, they had been searching. But you're not, as an Orthodox, you're always warned against the Baptist churches, right? Those repenters, those bad people over there. Well, they found out the, the repenters were loving people, loving, caring people. And we wear the name repenter with pride. We praise the Lord. We are repenters. But just to give you a touch of what God is doing, and you're having a part of that, every soul to save, every life that is changed, you have a part of that. 
uh, through your giving and through your praying. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Father, thank you for the joy of this hour to be able to share this morning. And thank you for Pastor Roger and Amy. Thank you for their life, their testimony, their love for you, their love for the Word of God. And thank you for this church family. We are so grateful to be a part, to be their ambassadors, to be able to, to go to Romania and other countries to be able to share the Word of God.